Jeannie, one of the areas we should discuss, uh, which has had quite a bit of controversy, a lot of literature uh, published on it, is how do we manage fever in young infants in the emergency department? You're right, Graham. And when we look at high-risk clinical conditions from a medical malpractice standpoint, we not only look at frequency of claims, but we also look at severity. And misbacterial infections in infants is not a high-frequency claim, but it is high severity. The consequences of failing to diagnose a serious bacterial infection, or SPI, often involve death or permanent disability. Meningitis carries the highest average indemnity payment in emergency medicine, almost a half a million dollars, and it ranks number five in errors related to diagnosis by clinical condition. Most often, a fever in an infant is caused by a benign, self-limiting viral illness, but those who are at risk for SBI have to be treated through adherence to a well-researched, evidence-based clinical protocol. The protocol for infants older than 29 days, as you know, is not totally agreed upon in the medical community, but if the infant's younger than 29 days, there's really little disagreement on the treatment protocol and there's no room for variation among emergency department physicians in treating this high-risk population. Infants at six, younger than 60 days are at particular risk for several reasons. They lack mature immune systems. They can't communicate with the ED physician and provide clues as to the possibility of an underlying significant illness. And they haven't received the usual childhood vaccinations. In fact, the rate of missed SBI in infants younger than two months is between two and 3%. And while that may sound low and it's decreased from years past, it's concerning when you consider the consequences. So what I hear you really saying in the message, take home message is, this is a diagnosis that's small in frequency but very large in risk. Absolutely, especially when you consider how difficult it can be to identify those infants who are truly ill when fever may be the only presenting symptom. That's a good point, Jeannie. I think uh, let's talk about some specifics when we talk about fever. The first is having an accurate definition. I really think that um, all these uh, children have to have rectal temperatures and that fever itself is defined as a temperature of 100.4. Um, the next is when we talk about a full septic workup in these young infants, um, they're getting lumbar punctures, they need to get early antibiotics, and they need to be admitted to the hospital. Uh, and you're right, there's no disagreement about that. Um, for the uh, infants that fall in from 29 days to 60 days, um, there are some things that we should discuss and also document. Uh, one is on the history side, um, do they have any uh, evidence uh, or is any history of prematurity, uh, congenital disease, um, previous illnesses, uh, or medical problems uh, that have been previously treated? We need to make sure that we know about that early on because if you're on that fine line of making a decision, it might sway you one way or the other. Um, the other is power of observation, uh, whether or not they're ill-appearing, and uh, the description um, and, uh, from the parents about their perception of what's going on. Um, I think it's been uh, said numerous times that when a parent tells you that their child is not acting their normal way, that uh, a physician should you know, really uh, pay high credence to that comment because I think there's value there. Um, if we talk about some other specifics like the lumbar puncture, um, oftentimes we've seen uh, physicians, great physicians, who have talked themselves out of uh, doing a procedure that they may think be, would be indicated, uh, but there's some concern on the part of the parents or somebody else talks them out of that. So I think we need to stick to our guns if we really think it's indicated. Um, an, another uh, useful technique in the emergency department is the power of observation. So even though these infants are young, uh, just uh, there is great value in evaluating them from across the room. Um, are they interactive? Um, are they feeding? Uh, what do they look like? Um, uh, are they engaged with the, with the parent? So I think that that's something that should be documented in the chart as well. Um, abnormal vital signs is always an issue. When people talk about abnormal vital signs. I think the most important thing is not only to document it, but to address it. And many times I think um, we all feel better, uh, so you can ask the question, who are we treating, if we document that a temperature is improving, uh, that it's gone down, um, that the, the parents and the nurses and the doctors feel better. Uh, but you know, temperature is a symptom, not the underlying, underlying disease state. So the important thing is to document but address any abnormal vital signs. Um, and for those children that are uh, in that uh, age range uh, where they may possibly go home, they have a, a negative septic workup um, and uh, uh, they are well appearing, um, I think you make that decision by ensuring that there's very close follow-up, ideally talking to a pediatrician and, and uh, explaining to them what you've done, what your thought processes are, um, and educating the parents on what to watch for, but close follow-up is paramount. 
Grammy did a really good job of giving us an overview of the clinical protocol for infants 0 to 29 days, older than 29 days. Do you have any other tips that you'd like to give us before we close? Yeah, I think most uh, malpractice um, and risk management um, is really about a failure to do the basics. Um, and I think with this population, you need to do a very careful history. It needs to be documented. Um, uh, again, uh, any prior illnesses, but even something as simple as if we're going to talk about a child with diarrhea, um, commenting on whether there's blood in the stool or not. So careful history taking uh, is paramount, followed by a careful exam. Uh, you can't diagnose a particular rash if a child isn't in a gown. Um, you can't um, look for signs of perfusion. Uh, so I think that um, we need to make sure that we do a complete and thorough exam. Um, we've talked about getting on the same page, so everybody uses um, uh, objective terms to describe the child as opposed to ones uh, where there's variability in meaning, like words like uh, lethargy, which mean different things to different people. A um, couple other that, that bear mentioning, one is urinalysis in this um, uh, age range. I think that uh, literature is pretty clear that it has to be a cath urinalysis um, and that even if the urinalysis is negative, it should be sent for a culture. Um, one interesting area that's changed is there's a lot more interaction now uh, with mid-level providers in the emergency department, which I think is a good thing. We have manpower needs and shortages and there's increasing volumes. But I do think there ought to be a discussion about uh, which um, uh, patients uh, that are potentially high risk that a physician ought to be involved in. And I think these patients absolutely fall into that uh, category. And you know, two sets of eyes um, in, in trying to make decisions about infants are better than one. And one of you may see something the other one didn't. Mm -hmm.